Hello, hello, hi, hi, hello. We are going to look at this manga today called Game Club. Um, this is not a super popular manga. It only has, um, wait, where do I see? A thousand or so people following it. There's actually quite a lot more than um, uh, it has had recently. I think there's been some sort of uptick in popularity. But uh, I really love this series. I, uh, I don't know really how I found out about it. I think it's because this scanlation group Penny Theater was doing it, and they've done a lot of other stuff that I've been interested in. Actually, I should check out what these are. Uh, I've really been enjoying this one, Miss Bernard said. Um, similarly, these both have pretty amateurish art and are much more about kind of the concepts being discussed and such. Um, this one is a pretty simple premise. It's about a high school game club. Um, but there's a few things about it that I think are really unique and really special. So in the, I think these are just released in like doujinshi. It's never actually like been published as a proper series or serialized or whatever. Um, it's just a series of doujinshi by this person, Imitation Crystal, who I also saw because they did um, an adaptation of the Library of Babel by Borge, which is a really cool story, really cool author. Um, I want to read this other stuff too, but that will come later. So the first thing that really got me about this series um, is just how faithfully they depict the, the experience of playing a new game of trying to figure out how like the platforming mechanics work, how the enemy fighting mechanics work. Just, I don't know, it's just so endearing, it's so relatable. It has such like a coziness to it when they, they show in such detail the playing of the game. So I thought, okay, it's just gonna be them playing different games and having this level of uh, kind of exposition. I was more than happy with that. But it actually evolves so much further past that. Um, the main focus is actually on creating games, um, recruiting a few more people to the club. All of the characters are extremely, extremely interesting. I, I don't even know how to begin describing them, besides that they're weirdos, and that the, the president of the club, my favorite character, says she loves weirdos, and that she wants weirdos to be in the club. Um, here we learn about the game of life, digital organisms, Conway's game of life and others. Um, yeah, so as I said, the main focus is on making games. Uh, they, it starts with them. Um, this is a game they made before, the Angry Cookie King. Um, and just kind of the, the development elements of it are like so in line with what a bunch of kids would actually make a game like. Like just this, uh, I, don't, I don't know, it's hard to describe, just like the depravity of it, just this simplicity. The fact that they would put in something like this. <laughs> and then you get to go up above and wipe them all out. <laughs> Ah, I don't know. I, it's really hard to talk about the appeal in the series. There's a few other chapters, too, where they just play video games. Like, I think this one. They just play a, a Grand Theft Auto-esque game. And it, again, feels so extremely realistic. <laughs> oh, the, the characters and the comedy, it's just, it's also endearing. Um, so I won't talk too much about like the plot, I guess. Um, there's a few kind of like twists and pieces of intrigue and stuff, and I, I really just want everyone to experience it for themselves. I, I think this series is, is just actually fantastic. Um, but the, the latest arc will just kind of catch you up there. They're making an RPG. It's a post-apocalyptic RPG. Um, oh, this one, they're just playing a game again. Very endearing. It looks like maybe in each volume there's like a couple of chapters of the main plot of them making games, and then uh, a chapter of of just playing a game and showing you that that's that what it's like. A lot of character backstory too, but always from the perspective of like other characters, um, sharing what they know about their friends and such. 
the way they talk about designing the game is like really interesting and relatable too. Um, when they're talking about the uh, the shmup game they made, saying a lot of stuff like, "Oh, I just figured that's how it was supposed to be." Isn't it normally like this and stuff? And their their uh, advisor, one of the teachers at the school, being like, "Yeah, yeah, okay, I see what you mean." <laughs> Okay, so I thought I would start reading this series and videos because we're approaching the end, and I'm really, really interested to see where the series is going to go. So I highly suggest just stop watching this right now and get caught up if you aren't already, aren't already reading it. Um, but if you are caught up and you'd like to uh, check out these latest two chapters with me, we're going we're gonna to give it a try. So this is called Pre-Apocalypse 1. Ooh, we get character intros, I guess because it's a new volume. And this is convenient, too, if you're just watching this and you haven't bothered uh, reading it up until this point. Ferocious hates lies. Join the game club due to Beshiko inviting her. President. Ah, oh, I love President. She's so interesting. I think I can really relate to her. Like, I think I can really understand so many of the things she says and, and just kind of the feelings she has and the, the game that she loves that features the mad moon that her hairpin is based on. <sighs> mad moon hairpin is her favorite item. Playtester. It's been killing people online ever since she was six. Gaming warrior. The president's number two subordinate. It's the vice president. We don't see much of him. Shy. Was dragged into the game club to straighten it up. Always sits somewhere in the back. Oyone. President's trusted subordinate. Has been subservient to the president ever since middle school. And Suakun, a boy infatuated with his rubber duck. Join the game club in hopes of making digital organisms. Oh, the fact that they get so nerdy about the game of life in the series is amazing to me. That it's clear that the author reads the game of life wiki just like I do. Okay, 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 okay. It's raining. Oh, the series is just so special. I definitely have to track down those, these Dodinchi. This is definitely... A must own relic. It's raining. Prez loves rain. It just sounds so relaxing, isn't it? I just want it to rain in my friggin' Animal Crossing game so I can go catch a coal camp and make some money. So nice, I wonder why. Parents wouldn't tell you to go outside and play it when it rains. You can just stay inside and play video games. Oh, Mishiko Chad! Hanging out with Prez. Ah, uh, oh, something about this character. It's like I just I feel like I can really understand her. This is so nice. Before I, I said maybe that the art was kind of amateurish. And it like sort of is. Like the details of anatomy and stuff aren't really here. But the composition of shots, I think, is really well done. Like look at this. This is really nice. Suakun being observed by Beshiko Chen. Morishima Chen showing up. Morishita Chen. Ooh! Here we have a little character sheet. The fact that they're so intrigued by Prez, too. That at first she seems kind of normal. She just seems like a upstanding person. She's serious about her club activities. She likes making games and playing games. But then this this infatuation she has with weirdos, that she just wants weirdos to join the club. She wants to make the club a welcoming place for them. Starts making people intrigued. The newer members are so confused. What kind of person is she really? And they start kind of researching. And the more they find out, the more they're like, oh, there's a lot more to her going on than maybe we thought. And especially in the chapter where it shows her briefly living at home, and her mother asking for her breakfast, and it just really seems like they're very impoverished. They're just in this tiny apartment. Writing down Prez's mysteries. Hmm. Getting closer to the truth. This club is her testing ground for making killing machines. <sighs> Vice Prez's weak depression always follows her orders. Leone is her trusted and loyal subordinate. Shiko Chen is a wild child. Not just any wild child, she's a bloodthirsty wild child. She makes them play all these weird games. What? Why is Suakun... Suakun, I think, is just, like, a, such a frightful person. Suakun is just... 
always on the verge of crumbling. And so I feel like this is his par <clears throat> his paranoia taking over. Morishita Chen is dissatisfied with society. It might go postal anytime soon. Me, I wonder. I'm sure it's that I'm not interested in anything alive, attracted to objects and digital organisms. So I bet she wants me to, to push me into killing people to turn them into objects. So that I could claim them as mine. Whoa! <laughs> what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's true. Ah! Crush on present. You're so passionate about trying to know her. Goodness me, do you honestly think I could be in love with something that's not an object? <laughs> These faces are really good. The most unpleasant person I've ever seen. Don't you know why she's such a It's crazy. They're all crazy. They're all just weirdos. How are you going to make it games? Oh, I just, I don't know. I just really love this series. Tell just by looking at him. What's with the duck? Oh yeah, because she joined after him. She didn't hear this story. It's Junko-chan. It's his sister, his pet's memento. Yeah, he lied about it being his sister's memento so that he wouldn't get in trouble. But it was actually his pet's memento. It was when his pet died and he experienced that extreme loss, that extreme sadness. He decided, I'll, I'll never allow myself to lose something like that again. I will love only objects. Instead, the pet burden had died. Chucked him so hard he couldn't even swallow food. Then he swore to himself. He swore to live his life not living things, but objects. This is history. He takes a bath with it, takes it to school, lies to the teachers that it's a moment of his sister, never letting it go. Ah, yes, because she heard about the incident where the teacher wanted to confiscate the rubber duck and he flipped out. He really is crazy. That's why he's in this club. Why do you think we recruited you? Because you're crazy too. <laughs> not, not crazy. Everyone else is. What's the president thinking? Anyway, what's the point of gathering up a bunch of crazy people? Also, if you say that everyone in the game club is insane, then you're crazy too, Bushido Chan. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, every facial expression she makes is so good. <laughs> Whatever. All part of her plan. So paranoid. Pissing me off. If you really think so, then just ask her directly. Don't go behind her making something like this. Hmm. I agree. She's been totally forthcoming and open whenever they've asked her any other questions. She sometimes is a little vague, but I think in a way that you still learn a lot. We need to have a serious talk. I'd like to know about your secret. Oh, I'm so... I don't think there is a secret. I don't think there's a secret at all. I think this is just the sort of person that Prez is. She likes weirdos. She likes weird games. Maybe she's sad. Maybe she's deep down kind of depressed. But that she, she genuinely enjoys seeing strange passions in the world. That's what I think. Truth. <laughs> Not gonna already with you. This is how I am pretty much the whole day. Look at how happy Vishiko Chad is. Like, yeah, salsa go friends. I'm like this for 90% of the day, so this is 90% of me. Can't you just leave it at that? I'm actually trying to make a killing machine. <laughs> That's in the past, okay? What? What in the world? Couldn't care less about it anymore, but it's true that I did have an interest in that. Let me put it this way. Have you ever held a knife? Not like that. Have you ever held a knife with the intent to stab someone? Maybe I can't relate to Prez anymore. Maybe I don't understand after all. I don't know. Have you 
ever help in life? I'm trying to know what's he got home. I have, but I couldn't go through with it. My hand just couldn't stop shaking. Oh, man. Oh, I feel like something really bad happened in her past. I think with her father is my guess. That she felt like she had to kill her father. I couldn't put any strength into my hand. I played so many killing games. She didn't know that. The president couldn't find it in herself to kill. That's why she approached the she code. She's her first failure. I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on anymore. Prez, who I thought I understood so well, who I thought I could relate to, has become mysterious to me again. Has become more mysterious than ever. You know, it's interesting. Well, first off, I told my friend this morning, my friend was like, oh, I finally read that, that Game Club, Club manga you recommended. I really liked it. So that made me happy. I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, ah, oh, I really like the Prez character. I feel, I feel like I can really relate to her. But now I'm reading these chapters and I'm like, uh-oh. Does he think I'm, like, a killer? <laughs> does he think I want to kill somebody? I don't want to kill somebody. Uh, it's interesting. This is so weird. The other thing. I was traveling to San Francisco a while ago. You might recall. I was reading this book. It's called Will and Testament by Vigdis Enjoy. I'm going quite slowly through it. It's pretty heavy, pretty brutal. Um, not a fun read. Uh, it's, it's about a woman who was abused as a child, who then kind of disowns her parents. Her father was abusive. She's totally not in contact with them. Then there's this incident of major family drama about inheritance, who will inherit their summer cottages. And she's kind of forced to take sides and get back involved with the lives of her family. And uh, the, the fact that she kind of suffered this abuse is, um, it's never, well, it hasn't been like explicitly stated yet, but it's quite obvious that something like that must have happened to drive the the total lack of communication between her and her parents. Anyways, um, I remember I was super sleep deprived and I had been rereading all of Game Club just because I love it and I've reread this entire series a couple times now. Um, so I was rereading Game Club and I was kind of alternating between reading that and reading Will and Testament. And as I kind of got tired and, and started drifting in and out of sleep, I started mixing up the characters in my head the narrator of Will and Testament and the character of Prez to the extent that I was convinced that something terrible had happened to Prez as well, That's, that Prez had been abused by, by her father growing up. Um, somehow I, I just arrived at that kind of dreamy state where I, I thought that that was true. And now I kind of think it is true and that Prez tried to kill her father. Maybe. Jesus, I don't know. I feel like I should clarify to my friend. I hadn't read the last two chapters when I said I related to Prez. I've never had to feel like that. I've never had to feel like I had to kill someone. Thank God. That must be a pretty terrible feeling. <gasps> okay. All right. Sorry, I just thought of something else. Not to do with me. Just something that I remembered a friend telling me a long time ago that I don't think about very often. Do the same thing with Morishita this time. Someone she wants dead that much. So she was over it though. I trust that. Hmm. It's starting to see when somebody comes in and says, I'm the president's slave too. It actually sounds possible. They all really kind of do what she says in the end. Although it's because she's the president of their club and they're doing club activities. Oh, 
Huh. Oh man, okay. Let's continue onwards. This is intense. Oh, that was the end of that chapter. Okay. Let's uh let's read chapter twenty two as well. You ready? I don't think I'm ready. Where this could be the end. Because so far they've been releasing them. Or more recently, they've been releasing them as, like, chunks. I don't know. I don't know how many volumes there are, but I know that it's over. That there's some number of volumes. But this is pre-apocalypse. I feel like there should be, thus, the apocalypse. Okay. Let's read 22.